Welcome back, everybody! Now, normally this would be the time to start doing Patreon requests, but since I expanded the number of potential requests to five, I thought it'd be best to do the bonus objective review first. With that in mind, I asked you to vote on an Easter-related piece of media for me to cover. And most of you have decided on Rankin Bass's first Easter film, Here Comes Peter Cottontail. This special is based on some old media associated with the Peter Cottontail name. The story is based on a novel called The Easter Bunny That Overslept by Priscilla and Otto Friedrich, but the name of the character is derived from Here Comes Peter Cottontail, a 1949 song by Steve Nelson and Jack Rollins. And it's Gene Autry's version of the song that cemented the name for The Easter Bunny. In any event, this special originally came out on April 4th of 1971. It was supervised by Rankin Bass veteran Romeo Muller, and it would be the first of three specials that featured the Easter Bunny in some fashion. One of them was The Easter Bunny is Coming to Town from 1977, and the other was The First Easter Bunny from 1976. Maybe I can go over those in the future, but for now, here comes Peter Cottontail! And that's a disturbing image. A bunny head on a sign. I know it's not supposed to be anything gruesome, but come on! Oh, look, 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 look out! Well, here, here, here I come. Ready or not. <laughs> Ta-da! Seymour! Okay, this is Seymour as Sassafras, voiced by Danny Kaye. He'll be our narrator for the movie, and a regular character, if his mentions of Peter Cottontail are anything to go by. He tells us that Peter is one of the rabbits living out their lives in April Valley. April Valley's where all the Easter bunnies live and work. Oh, yes. Ah, April Valley's finest candy cars. Meet Milk Chocolate Angelo and Leonardo the Bittersweet. Huh, I get it, but... Wait, I don't know anything about Peter Cottontail. Great chattering chick chicks. They've never heard of Peter Cottontail. They've never heard of Peter Cottontail? No, tell me. I want to know. You mean you never heard how he almost lost the job? You actually mean you never heard how a terrible, wicked, nasty rabbit named Iron Tail almost became the Easter Bunny? I'm concerned about this character, with how he looks and how he has iron in his name. He's a freaking Nazi rabbit! At least he has the voice of Vincent Price. <laughs> Montresor! Montresor! Away! Away! Anyway, Seymour begins telling the story by having us look inside this egg and singing the titular song. Here comes Peter Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail, hippity hopping, Easter's on its way. Like with most stop motion works from Rankin Bass at around this time, the animation is done by Video Tokyo Production, and it's every bit as delightful. Of course, this one will sometimes splice in 2D screens, because we tend to go in and out of the viewing egg thing. In any event, Colonel Wellington B. Bunny, also voiced by Danny Kaye, is trying to find his replacement as Chief Easter Bunny. After mulling it over, he chooses Peter, voiced by Casey Kasem, the first voice actor for Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Our hero is a troublemaker, but he does remind the colonel of himself. Every time you tell a fib, your left ear droops. Oh, <laughs> well, I guess I did think about the job once or twice. Uh, lots of times. Well, I mean, it could be worse. He might have a knack for music. Then again, this is a musical, so I don't think that's a problem either. There are tulips that need tending, and baskets that need mending. The jelly beans are piling up in heaps. 
There are eggs that need collecting And hens who are expecting In spring the Easter bunny never sleeps Much like Pinocchio's Christmas, the songs range from being enjoyable to meh. This song, which is about the duties of an Easter bunny and what everyone is doing in the meantime, is harmless enough. Definitely enjoy Danny Kaye's singing voice, though. There are children waiting everywhere. There can be no delay. Meanwhile, we see that one assistant rabbit talking to Iron Tail about Peter's promotion. This pisses off the Nazi rabbit, and we also learn how he lost his tail to a skateboarding kid. Having a nice, fluffy, white cotton tail like that Peter. But it was an accident, sir. The child didn't mean to. I don't care! Since that time, I have detested all children. Jeez, what a grouch. One child destroys his tail and suddenly it's everyone's fault? Seriously, he wants to become chief just to get back at everybody. So just as Wellington is about to officially make Peter the new chief, Iron Tail shows up at the last second to challenge the appointment. To do this, he shows everyone the constitution of April Valley. Chief Easter Bunny shall be the one who delivers the most eggs. I know that! That's why I've chosen... Well, when it comes to delivering eggs, Peter Cottontail is... <laughs> real squeamish carrots to January Q Iron Tail. I propose a contest to see who can deliver the most eggs. Yes, yeah, absolutely out of the question. Wait a minute, Colonel. I'm not afraid of Iron Tail. I should hope so. I don't want to have to play any chase music anytime you run away. Wellington is convinced that Peter can handle the job, so the challenge is set. We're reminded of what Iron Tail could do if he's in charge, so no pressure. Just gotta wake up early on Easter Day. But Peter was so sure he'd win the next day that instead of getting lots of sleep, he had a big party with all his friends. And it was very late when he finally went to bed. Jinkies! What a dumb bun. Not like it matters because Iron Tail shows up to trick his rooster alarm into having bubble, bubble, bubble gum, corn flavored bubble gum. My <laughs> yoikes! Like, what are you yelling about, man? Oh no, that doesn't happen. So not surprisingly, Peter sleeps in the whole day. And while he does, Iron Tail attempts to give away eggs. Nobody wanted an egg from an unpleasant old bunny like Iron Tail. Maybe basing your appearance on Hitler was a bad idea. But still, Iron Tail wins because he gives an egg to a sleeping man. So now that he's in charge, he announces his evil plans. All the hens who are expecting will get no more protecting. For in spring, the Easter bunny always sleeps. Instead of chocolate bunnies and chicks, I commissioned the candy sculptors to make tarantulas <laughs> and octopuses. Joke's on you. Plenty of people out there would love those. Feeling disgraced for not doing his job, Peter leaves the valley to make up for his errors. And after days of traveling and nearly giving up, he wakes up the next day to find Seymour. Turns out he's in the Garden of Surprises. I mean, I never know what's coming up. Sometimes I plant beans and roses surprise me. Why, once I planted pumpkins. And do you know what came up? Huh? Uh, no, what? Pumpkins. Now, that was a surprise. We're then introduced to a way for our hero to right his wrong. This is the Yestermaromobil, which will apparently let our hero go back or forward through time. Now Peter can travel back in time and deliver eggs on Easter. Huh? Hello, hello, hello. Ew, that's disturbing. Antoine, who is also voiced by Danny Kaye, is the French pilot of this strange machine. We can see some labeled buttons for specific holidays, but those don't matter. Peter's going back to Easter. Thanks for everything, Mr. Sassafras. But I didn't give you everything. Huh? <laughs> I 
could only get back to yesterday. Of course, if he does go back in time, won't this cause a time paradox? Oh well, at least we have some pretty visuals while they travel through time. I think. Because now we see Iron Tail realize what Peter's trying to do. Uh, I forgot all about Sassafras' silly time machine. And whose fault is that? Our main villain puts a large spider in this rocket and sends it towards our heroes. That's so crazy, I love it. Anyway, the spider gets onto the time machine and messes with it. I don't know how they never noticed, or if they even saw the rocket at all, but whatever. This causes preemptive crash landing on... Crash right down in the middle of Mother's Day. Now we have giant calendars floating in the sky. The special is weird. Our heroes don't know that it's Mother's Day, and they only realize it when Peter starts giving out eggs. You forgot us on Easter. What, you mean to tell me that only the chief Easter Bunny delivers eggs? What good are all those other rabbits then if all they do is make the stuff? And since everyone in town doesn't want his eggs, because wrong holiday, Peter's forced to move on. The machine is repaired enough to fly, but the next holiday they end up in turns out to be... But the 4th of July! According to Antoine, Peter just needs to deliver the eggs regardless of the holiday. So maybe Peter can take advantage of that. But for now, we're treated to a song about improvising. People believe what they are, their eyes. So when you can't get it all together, improvise. That faces many moods. Fun song and all, but it's clear what sort of plan Peter must have. Turn the Easter eggs into something else. Thank goodness Seymour gave them paint, and even costumes. Gee, I wonder if anybody will really want my eggs. I hate to say this, but... This special would be a lot shorter if Peter just gave these eggs out to starving families who won't say no. Remember, he doesn't have to give out Easter eggs. They can just be regular eggs, period. But of course, our hero goes about this the dumbest way possible. He tries to give away the eggs as firecrackers. These are red, white, and blue. Uh, Egg-shaped torpedoes. You know, you toss them on the ground and kabloom. Torpedoes, huh? Yeah, and I bet they're as dangerous. <laughs> Okay, I can buy that maybe these eggs might pass for firecrackers, but there's no way these kids would be gullible enough to- Oh boy, torpedoes! Wow, we'll take all you got! Yeah! Gimme! Let me at him! Come on, let's take him to- Well, at least he gave them away for free. Now if he can just get the hell out of Dodge before the kids realize they were scammed- Hey, rabbit! These are not firecrackers. Well, fellas, it was uh, just a little joke. <laughs> we don't like jokes. Let him have it, Homer. Oh, wait a minute. Whoops, watch out. Oh, I got them all back again. Serves you right for saying that they were fireworks. I mean, you kind of told him to do it with your song. I guess this is where we learned that lying doesn't always resolve everything. Anyway, next up is Halloween. Iron Tail decides to stop Peter by calling up an old acquaintance of his, Madame Esmeralda, voiced by Joan Gardner. Madame Esmeralda, and how is my favorite witch today? Well, Halloween's my busy season, don't you know? After Halloween, I'm pooped as a petrified poltergeist. <laughs> <laughs> She's ordered to just scare Peter, but our hero gets amused by her acts of evil. This causes her to switch sides after she happily accepts an egg when offered. My first. For me? A present? Oh, I must tell the whole weirdo community. All the ghosts, witches, werewolves, and... Everybody! They'll be so happy to receive Halloween eggs! Well, that's one. And I think Peter can be the new chief right now if he just gifts Antoine with an egg. But of course, Iron Tail orders his Bat Minion to steal the basket and destroy the eggs. Peter and Antoine get them back, but because they can't go back to Halloween, they have to move on to Thanksgiving. Too bad they came after everyone had their big Thanksgiving feast in the middle of the day. 
So, uh, on to Christmas! I think here they're reusing the Santa model from Santa Claus is Coming to Town. I mean, why wouldn't they? Like with Thanksgiving, Peter is unable to distribute the eggs, but he is introduced to a living bonnet named Bonnie. She was actually a creation that the rabbits made last Easter, but sadly, no one's bought her yet. <laughs> I guess nobody wanted a talking headpiece. Then again, everyone was fine with a sentient rabbit, so why they'd freak out over her is a mystery. Peter asks the store owner to buy Bonnie. She says no, since he has no money, but she does accept the Christmas eggs on offer. Deal? Deal. Deal! Deal! Deal? <laughs> 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 but like an idiot, Peter left the eggs outside unattended, and of course this gives Iron Tail the chance to steal the eggs. So our hero is back to square one. He chases after him, and he's bringing Bonnie along? I guess the store owner let him have it even after not receiving eggs? Somehow Peter forgets about Antoine, so he is forced to fly the time machine that he doesn't understand. Thankfully, our villain just crashes right into Santa. What are you doing with those eggs? Well, you know they belong to Peter Cottontail. Oh, why don't you stick to your own holiday? You invaded this holiday first, asshole. Anyway, Santa drops the eggs down to Peter, who can't thank him properly due to not stopping the time machine. He's now passing through New Year's Day and is starting to feel doubtful about making more deliveries. You never tried this one, Peter! It says stop! That wasn't there before. That button was ST. And considering most of these buttons didn't have the right abbreviations for the holidays, I don't think it would have been the stop button, but yeah, it works. Now they're in Valentine's Day. As Peter gets ready to deliver, he runs into another rabbit named Donna, who recognizes him from the paper. Oh no, my name's Harold. Uh, Harold Hassenpfeffer. Oh. oh, I guess I'm Peter Cottontail. Well, you shouldn't be ashamed. Anybody can make one mistake. You just overslept. Fair point, but don't forget, people tend to put a lot of pressure on those with a lot of responsibility, no matter how significant the occasion is. He takes the chance to give her an egg, but of course they leave it unattended again. I guess all of that ice skating is worth it though. My heart's the drummer, come and listen to it playing. It seems to be saying, be mine today. Just want to say, Casey Kasem is a good singer. Didn't see that coming. But Iron Tail butts into the moment, but instead of stealing the eggs, he does this instead. The evil old bunny found a spell which would ruin the eggs for good and make them so that no one would ever want them. He turned them all green. Oh, and were they ever green? A real greeny green. Way through. The shells were green, the yolks were green, even the whites were green. Well, at least he didn't make a giant coronavirus ball. And I guess that's where Sam I Am gets his eggs. Now Donna doesn't want her egg, which makes Peter despair. But Seymour sings a song about not giving up in life, because it's like one big puzzle. There's one piece that keeps it together, you will find it. After that, Peter swears he won't lie again, and that he'll tend to his duties before pleasure. I'll take it as a compromise between working hard and still enjoying life, but anyway, he realizes that the next holiday is St. Patrick's Day, and what color is most associated with that holiday? Get your Paddy's Day shamrock eggs right here! Free for the asking they are, and as green as the Emerald Isle all the way through! And that, for once, is no fib! So with that, Peter easily wins the contest to become the Chief Easter Bunny, 
and as the song plays again, he's on his way to deliver eggs. He also meets up with the friends and people he met along the way. Bonnie is given to the mother who wanted a bonnet. Antoine is now a butterfly. And Iron Tail is a janitor. But at least he gets to join in on the final farewell. Happy this isn't the best Rankin Bass special, but it's pretty good as far as Easter specials go. The voice work was highly enjoyable, there were some good songs to be had, and the animation is a delight. The story plays it safe by issuing the most obvious of morals, like being honest and humble, but I still got a kick out of the sillier elements in the plot, especially the Santa cameo. A little more and we'd have a true holiday crossover special, but even without that, this is a fun little Easter special that I wouldn't mind watching again. I'm the Media Hunter. Media's my prey, and reviewing them my way. Easter's on its way. Bringing every girl and boy baskets full of Easter joy. Things to make your Easter bright and gay.